This video is for B5, moments. The moment of a force is the turning effect of that force. A weight of 10 newtons placed on a beam will produce a downward force on that beam of 10 newtons. If the pivot is not along the line of action of that force, then there is a moment. In this case, the force is acting 40 centimetres to the left of the pivot and trying to produce anti-clockwise rotation. The moment of that force, which I've represented here with the Greek letter tau, can be calculated as the product of the perpendicular displacement between the pivot and the line of action of the force, which in this case is 40 centimetres, and the force, which in this case is 10 newtons. And so here you can see that the moment is 400 newton centimetres, or 4 newton metres. Importantly, the displacement from the pivot to the line of action of the force has to be perpendicular to the force. Here you can see the same diagram, but now I have tilted the beam. And here I've indicated that, in this case, I've tilted the beam 30 degrees. Well now, the perpendicular displacement from the pivot to the line of action of the force is no longer 40 centimetres. The 40 centimetres is the hypotenuse, and so this perpendicular displacement from the pivot to the line of action of the force is 40 centimetres multiplied by the cosine of 30 degrees, which is approximately 346 newton centimetres of moment. It is always helpful to draw a diagram in this sort of problem because if you are given an angle it could be given to the horizontal as it has been in this case or it could be given to the vertical and if your angle is given to the vertical then you would have to use the sine of the angle. A popular question is one like this where you'll have a beam of some known mass and asked how much mass you have to support on the right hand end in this picture in order for the beam to balance. Here we make use of the principle of moments and that is that the clockwise moment will equal the anti-clockwise moment if the body is in equilibrium. The anti-clockwise moment is caused by the weight of the beam acting at the centre of mass here. This is a uniform beam. I've drawn this beam to scale and I hope that you can see, just by looking at the diagram, that three newtons acting down on this side of the beam would cause it to balance. But what if the numbers are not quite so convenient? So I've modified the picture now so that the pivot is 17 centimetres from the edge of this beam, but the beam itself is 100 centimetres long and has a weight of three newtons. How much weight do we need to balance this beam on the right-hand side? Well, the right-hand side is producing clockwise moment. The distance between the pivot and the line of action of the force, the perpendicular displacement, is 33 centimetres. And that's because from the right-hand side, the middle of the beam is 50 centimetres to the left, but the pivot is 17 centimetres to the left, and 50 minus 17 is 33. So the anticlockwise moment is 99 newton centimetres. That's going to have to be the same as the clockwise moment if this beam is in equilibrium. So the clockwise moment of 99 newton centimetres is equal to 17 centimetres multiplied by that force. So the force is 5.8 newtons. Sometimes we'll see a problem like this, a two support problem. This diagram is not drawn to scale, but I've added some measurements on. Maybe we're going to be asked what the force is on each of these supports. The trick here is to use our principle of moments where we take one of these supports as a pivot, but we know that the resultant moment is zero. The upward supporting force from the right-hand pivot produces an anti-clockwise moment. And the weight of the beam of 3 newtons and the weight of the object of 4 newtons both produce clockwise moments. Now we know this beam is in equilibrium, which means those three moments when added together have to equal zero. If we choose clockwise moments to be positive, that makes this a little bit easier. The perpendicular displacement from that left-hand pivot to the line of action of the 3 newton force is 40 centimetres multiplied by the 3 newtons 
is the moment clockwise caused by the 3 newton force. Now we have to add that to the perpendicular distance between the pivot and the line of action of the 4 newton force multiplied by the 4 newton force. If the weight is 23 centimetres away from the right hand support, then it is 57 centimetres away from the left hand support. So that is 57 centimetres multiplied by 4 newtons. And now we have to subtract the anti-clockwise moment produced by the right hand support. That is acting 80 centimetres from the pivot and is some unknown force. There's only one unknown in this equation. So rearranging this equation to get force as the subject gives us 4.35 newtons. We can now use Newton's first law to find the support force on the left-hand pivot, because the resultant force on this beam must be zero if the beam is not accelerating. The beam has 3 newtons and 4 newtons of force acting downwards, and we'll take those as positive, and we subtract the 4.35 newtons of force upwards, and that tells us how much force there is on the left-hand pivot, which is 2.65 newtons. We could have taken the right-hand support as the pivot and done our principle of moments analysis again, but we would have found the same force, and just using Newton's first law is much more straightforward and quicker. When answering moments questions, the most important thing you do is draw a diagram, then label your forces clearly, consider where the pivot is, label it carefully, and then if the principle of moments applies because there's no change in rotation, make sure your clockwise moment equals your anti-clockwise moment. A very common mistake that is made is to confuse clockwise and anti-clockwise moment. So make sure you think carefully about which direction a force is trying to rotate a beam around a pivot. Even if the beam isn't actually rotating, the force, if it is uh, applied some perpendicular distance from the pivot, is still producing a moment.